Hello, I'm here, but, um, I just realized I don't have a drink, so give me another, like, two minutes so I don't die, because it's a lot of voice acting. So I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay, I am back. I just need to... Lot of tabs. Okay. So, hello, Rohani. Hello, JJ. Hello, JFK. I will probably have to leave at some point, like I said, to get ice cream or something, because I'm having a day. All right, cool. Uh, let's unmute this. That would be good. Okay, and then let me know if it's too loud, because again, it looks too loud to me because I have three different audio setups. <laughs> and I don't know, okay. I do it's really, I don't like having desktop audio, desktop audio two, and Discord, but if I get rid of any of them, when I stream with people through Discord, it doesn't work. So I have to figure out what went wrong and which of the, there's no way I need three different things for desktop audio. However, the one time I streamed with Luca, because one of them was turned off, Luca spent half the, half the stream silent. So that VOD is one only Luca has because Luca's is half, Lu, on my end, Luca is silent for half the game. No. I'm blaming myself for it being muted, but I can't figure out what it is that is wrong. I don't think I need to, like I don't think I need all three of these mixers. I have no idea what's I don't know how to fix it at all. This is a guy. Oh good. The ones we were having so much difficulty with were just I did buy all of them. So uh, I did buy all of them, just in one go. God damn it. Jesus Christ. So loud. Start new. Start a new. I don't remember anyone's voices, so, um. I don't know. You hero! Ah. Uh. Oh god, shit. Are we expecting you? Oh, must be in the wrong room. Oh god, bad, 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 bad. It's gonna take me a bit, I'm sorry. Oh. I feel like I should do vocal warm-ups or something before, but I'm never going to. I got out of the shower approximately two seconds before I started this stream. Oh, Lawson, what are you doing here? Too late. Too late. What is... Was that in the game? I'm just hearing noises now. There you are, Al. So, who's this young lady then? Mm. I'm Lucy Baker. I'm the prof's new research assistant. Mr. Consonant there. You two haven't met before, have you? This is Justin Lawson. He's a detective with the Serious Crime Squad. Sorry, but the introductions will have to wait. Have you heard of the- have you heard about the actress in the on-stage murder case? Oh, I have. I saw it on the Jeremy Summer show. Some loopy fan announced they were going to kill the lass on stage. I don't know what her accent is. That's the press's take on it, is it? They've got it wrong. Yeah, it's much more straightforward than that. Stage ad was found in the wings holding the gun. Yeah, so you have your man then. Why did I only just now? Maybe I noticed last week. I was like, oh, red text, like Ace Attorney. But I can't remember if they did colored text in the Layton games, and I'm so tired. So if someone remembers if they did colored text in the Layton games, because it's not an Ace Attorney exclusive thing. I just always think of it. Unfortunately not. Someone punched the young bloke and knocked him out cold, you see. Well, I might have rather got a thumping. Interesting. This sounds like a case for the mystery room. We'll look into it. 
I had a feeling you'd want to take it on. I've always sent the foil over. Good luck with it. They leave the screen so fucking fast. They just, they just fly away. This might have just been the past profile case the prof and I ever worked on. The incident took place in a famous West End theatre. The popular actress was shot on stage in front of a full house. Oh my god. There were three suspects, one of whom w were a famous actor. It was the hottest gossip in town and the Jeremy Summer Show covered it every day. But the truth beyond the case, that were all the real shocker. No one could have guessed who the real culprit were. No one. A murder staged. Let's go over the case. The incident took place during the play in which a high profile actor and actress were starring. The victim was Gloria Blaze, the actress. Okay. The actress playing the part of the heroine. Oh shit. Okay, I am getting notifications. Hold on, let me- you guys won't see it. I'm just gonna mute these, because it is going to bother me. Because I can just hear it and it's pinging and annoys me. Alright, there we go. Thank you, Slack. Gloria Blaze, victim, 32, female. The victim, a famous actress. An actress of illustrious theatrical heritage who underwent stage training from a very early age and was greatly admired. Engaged to famous actor, Roscoe Stratton. Her co-star was the popular performer, Roscoe Strapping. Roscoe Strapping, suspect, 38, male, victim's fiancé and the star of the show. A preeminent star of the stage, of television, and of film, who enjoys overwhelmingly, overwhelming popularity. I'm sorry, I got caught up on the fact that there was no Oxford comma. That genuinely tripped me up. I was like, wait, how am I supposed to read this? Like, it's a list. It turns out the pair were also engaged to be married in real life. At the performance's climax the other day, the hero, played by Strapping, shoots his unfaithful wife, played by Blaze. As the shot goes off, Blaze falls to the floor in a pool of blood, as all this was exactly as scripted. I almost started going, like, into a different accent, and I don't know what happened just there. Despairing of his actions, the hero leaves the room. As he exits the stage, Strapping collides with the supporting actress, by the name of Destiny Knox. Destiny Knox? Are you kidding me? These are like, it's so weird because Ace Attorney has like such, maybe it's just that I'm not as used to it in latent games because every time I come across one, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I bet she were having a case of the jitters before her big entrance. Immediately after that, the lights went out. In the pitch black, Blaze cries out for help. As it dawns on the audience that this is not part of the play, another shot rings out through the darkness. No. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? The stage director hurriedly brings the lights back up, but Blaze is still where she lay, utterly motionless. Ow. Knox runs over to her and discovers that she's dead. Shot in the dark, eh? Oh, boo! Now we have to turn our attention to another involved party, a stagehand by the name of Break Leg. Break Leg? Woo, it's bad. It is bad in here. It is bad in here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh oh. Oh god. Woo. Break Leg. Suspect, 31, male. A stagehand in the victim's show. Oh, hello. Hey, Maya. How you doing? Hold on, one second.
Hello, sorry about that. Also, JFK, I think that's so funny that you didn't get break leg. But um, again, as the person who for it, to, it took me like two um, over two years to realize that uh, Gatewater Hotel was a play on Watergate, I have no like I can't I can't say shit to you. Like I can't say shit to anyone. It just it took me two years to figure that out. So can't can't entirely blame you here. Um a prop assistant who has a crush on Blaze. He personally manufactured all of the props used in the show, from the replica gun to the fake blood. He was found lying unconscious in the wings. With a murder weapon in his hand. What I'm kind of obsessed with is this does look like someone took, like, a little bit because of the shading levels. It does kind of look like someone took a PNG of a gun and then just kind of drew a hand on top of it. You know what I mean? Do we not agree that this looks like someone just took a PNG of a gun and slapped a texture on it and then just, like, drew a hand? No, JJ. This is like a pin cushion for costumes. <laughs> no. Bye, heck, prof. And not more incriminating than that, surely. It's far from conclusive proof that he's the killer, so the information's being kept from the press. Anyway, Clegg claims he was hit by someone while the lights were out. Sounds fishy to me. Perhaps, but he definitely lost consciousness for a while that is beyond dispute. Hmm. Ah. So let's consider who the culprit would be. We can start with the stagehand, Bray Clegg. He was found lying unconscious in the wings with the gun that was used in the shooting in his hand. However, he claims someone knocked him unconscious and planted the weapon on him. Going off the evidence we have, he's gotta be our number one suspect, eh? Our next suspect is the play's leading actor, Roscoe Strappin. He exited the stage just before the theater was plunged into darkness. He claims to have been alone in his dressing room when he heard the shot. Hmm, I wonder. Did I read this one? And finally we have the supporting actress, Ms. Destiny Knox. I don't know if I read this one. Uh, Destiny Knox, suspect 27 female, a new actress in the victim show. Though generally regarded as a good looking and competent upcoming up and coming talent, there are rumors that she'll stop at nothing to get a part. She was on stage with the victim when the lights went out. She was also the closest person to the victim when the lights came on again. The one who discovered the body. So those are our three suspects. Based on that information, Lucy, who do you think did it? What's your hunch? I've got none, bestie. After what? After you've told me that, we'll start with the actual actual detective work. It's curtains if I ever did this, Prof. Ma. You mark my words. Who is the criminal? So shall we investigate the scene? I'm never going to just start by guessing. I can tell you that. I'll give you five minutes this time. No problem, prof. Does this take up time if I go in here? Cool, it pauses. I wanted to say something. Or I wanted to look at something. Good statements first. Uh, Roscoe Strapping. Statement one. After my exit, I went straight back to my dressing room. I only realized something was wrong when I heard the gunshot. Statement two. When I came back onto the stage, the lights were up and Destiny was holding Gloria in her arms. I knew she was dead in an instant. Statement one. After the blackout, I heard Gloria scream. I'd know her scream anywhere. She's my absolute idol. It was definitely her. After the scream, I heard a gunshot right next to where I was standing. It was pitch black, so I couldn't see anything. I just remember being utterly terrified. When I made his exit from the stage, Mr. Streffing bumped into Destiny. I panicked a bit because it wasn't in the script. I heard a woman scream, but he, but then I was not attacked by someone who knocked me out. I didn't see the killer's face. When I came to, there was a gun in my hand. No, I can't, Ronnie, because uh, it's still bad, so you have to deal with it on your own. Mr. Strapping bumped into Destiny. Hoo hoo hoo. Interesting.
This too is Yuri. Happy Pride. Stage position A, a mark indicating Blaze's place on stage for the scene in which she gets shot. Corpse, Blaze's dead body. She was killed with a single bullet through the chest. Forensics confirm she was shot from a distance of one to three meters away. Bloodstain, a grim mix of Blaze's real blood and stage blood. The bright red is fake blood, while the red real blood has now darkened. Bloody note, a type slip of paper that reads, you'll pay for betraying me. It's not a prop from the show and has a hole through it where the bullet went through. Sounds like you already did pay, cause girl's fucking dead. Oh my god, congrats, JFK, that's awesome. Stage position B, a mark indicating strapping's Paley's on stage for the scene in which he shoots Blaze. Table and chair, a small table and chair that makes a part of the set. They look, they're brand new and look great. Set door, a door in the set used for the show. This is the exit strapping would have used to make, to leave this stage after his final scene. Stage position C, a mark indicating Knox's place on stage for the scene in which strapping shoots Blaze. Replica gun, a model of a gun that was used in the show. Its construction is such that it can only fire blanks. It's swimming in the oil used to lubricate the mechanism. Rubbish bin. A plastic rubbish bin situated outside of the audience. Various discarded items are inside. Well, what is inside, Bestie? Remote switch. A switch to detonate the squib of fake blood that was concealed in Blaze's outfit. She was supposed to operate at the appropriate time, but it was found in the bin. So, if it was found in the bin, does that mean that whoever shot her also had to have the switch? because they would have to time it so she was shot at the same time that the squib went off. Oh. Oh. Who the fuck are you? Oh, I forgot this is a replica of the crime scene. I was like, wait, why the fuck is there a person back here? Because it's a replica and it's not the crime scene itself. I really thought this was like afterward, like, they would have gotten Clegg off the scene, but it's that's not how this game works. Clegg. This is where Clegg was found unconscious. Revolver in hand. He was struck multiple times in the back of the head. Gun. An old revolver that had been identified as the weapon that killed Blaze. Five unused bullets were found in the cylinder. I assume there's six. I don't know anything about guns. Ladder. A ladder that links the two levels of the set. From the upper level, one can gain access to the lighting bridge. Oil stains. This would be from the, uh, gun. Oh, a large patch along the back of the set covered in lubricating oil. It looks to have been made by a hand rubbing along the wall, but no fingerprints are present. Sofa. A sofa used as a prop on stage at a distance. It appears to be a very luxurious piece of furniture, but in truth it's stained and suffering the effects of old age, as are all props in many theaters. Oh! Standard lamp. A standard lamp used on the set that offers somewhat mellow illumination. Picture. An oil painting hung on the wall of a set. It's a very beautiful picture, but being a replica, it is of no particular value. Well, pay attention to the bullet hole, my guy. Bullet hole. Having passed through Blaze's chest, the bullet that killed her pierced a hanging picture that was finally lodged- that to wit- wait. To finally lodge itself in the set wall. That would have been from the replica gun. And Knox was here. Strapping was here. I 
don't know who it is. You're like, trust your gut. My gut says jack shit today, buddy. Hannah! Hannah! straight back to my dressing room. I suddenly realized something was wrong when I heard the gunshot. When I came back to the stage, the lights were up and Destiny was holding Gloria in her arms. And I heard her and somebody scream. I'm just gonna choose someone. Who do you think the killer is? I don't fucking know, man. So... <sighs> he bumps into her, and he had the gun, but there's oil along the backside. So if he bumped into her and handed her the gun, is that anything? Let's just go with this. Like, JJ, I hate that my brain is like, could this have been organized? I don't know. He's probably gonna tell me I'm wrong. Mmm, and how would you- how have you reached that conclusion? Because Nox were the closest person to Blaze when she, when she was shot. But don't you see the problem? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, no, that's a good point. Here's the issue. My brain is telling me that people have to be working together, and I don't think that's how this game works. So, uh, we're gonna have to rotate things around in how my brain works. How could she have put the gun in Clegg's hand? I, I don't know. No, let me tell you what I think. I think strapping is our man. What? What? Yes, let's see. I'm... Okay. That is not as high as the other times, I don't think. 92.9% sure of it. Well, we best call the man in and have him put paid to your doubts the other 7.1% then. Exactly what I was hoping to do. Then why are you having me do this? But I'm not sure he'll come. Let's take a moment to consider what we already know about strapping. I know something. Roscoe Strapping started the stage, engaged to be married, but is engaged in you know what with another lass at the ta same time. At least that's what they're saying on to on to Jeremy Summer's show. Meh. So I suspect is something of a cad. Updated. However, his debauchery is also well known, and while engaged to the victim, he was carrying on an affair with the actress Destiny Knox. The polycule is in shambles. The worst kind of man, and the enemy of all women! Okay. But that's not what we should be focusing on here. There's something else that interests me. Eh? No? What's that? He's an actor, and actors are masters of a deception. They make fantasy appear as reality. Strapping is one of the best. You'd be a tough nut to crack then, eh, prof? Uh, eh, uh, we got company. Who are you? Oh. I don't remember what voice I gave him like 15 minutes ago. Do excuse the unannounced entrance. Oh, Roscoe Strapping. 
Ah, well, well, what a bell. An unexpected pleasure, I must say. Are you a fan, precious? You wish? I'm a research assistant here in the mystery room. DC Baker to you. This is the mystery room. The very place I've been looking for. You must be Roscoe Strapping. The one and only. My tame fame and... My fame and talent precede me, I see. Good. And you are. I work here in the mystery room with Detective Constable Baker. Inspector Layton's the name. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can find it. that JFK sent me last week. I meant to do it before, but things went to shit. It's probably gonna be huge, so don't worry about that. There we go. I w uh, you already said that. Might I ask why you're here? I heard there was a team attempting to unwrap the gruesome truth about my dear Gloria's chilling end. So I came to solve the mystery. Huh? Eh? Well, that would be great help. Please enlighten us. So, without further ado, I present to you the truth. The identity of the black-hearted miscreant responsible for my late wife's to be wife to be's demise. It was da 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 break leg the state up. Why you're quite the detective, aren't you, Mr. Strathen? It was an elementary case of deduction, my dear. Hey, reference. Firstly, he was crushed by unrequited love. And secondly, the prize simpleton was found holding the murder weapon. Simply following these two lines of investigation leads you directly to the unequivocal truth that my dear Gloria shuffled off this mortal coil when Bray Clegg put a bullet through her chest. Hmm. I see you're fairly fixed on your line of inquiry. Aren't you going to set this upstart straight, Prof? On the contrary, I think Mr. Strapping has some very compelling theories. So, let the investigation begin. He stole the prof's line. Well, investigating the wound means checking out the body, right? Would you like a strong man to escort you? I'll be just fine, thank you very much. Oh. single shot to the heart from between one and three meters away, resulting in instant death. Exactly from the barrel of the very revolver found in Clegg's guilty hand. Clegg did it. I'll see that dastard rot in hell. He'll go to hell for this. Please remind- try blah, blah, blah. Please try to remain calm. Let's continue with our investigation, shall we? Of course, do excuse me. Victim passed straight through the victim's- What? <sighs> the bullet passed straight through the victim's body. We should be able to find it somewhere on the scene. Seek out the slug. Ah, hey, prof. We're looking for a bullet hole now. Find the bullet hole. Thank god I already know where the fuck it is.
spider web. This is it, prof. Okay, so from the relative positions of this hole in the corpse, we can deduce where the shot originated. Ronnie, have you actually seen that clip? Because I'm pretty sure Hannah was there, but like, for people who weren't at that specific A.A. Fine Tony Lacquilas stream, have you seen Tony's spider clip? Because it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. No. No. It's- if someone can find it- no, it was not in the server. It was- it was like- a, it was- it was like a VOD clip when we were playing AA5. <laughs> Um, I know it's around somewhere, because we quote it all the time. Because it's the funniest thing ever. <laughs> okay, so from the religion blah blah blah, origins. Dead body here, bullet pole here, shooter here. I'll figure it out in Jiffy! Not so fast to stop. We already know that Gloria's life was taken by a bullet. We know it was a gun. Any- Yeah, obviously. Any further investigation sh about that is surely a, is, is a complete waste of time, surely. What's the point? We're just trying to be thorough, it won't take a moment. Establish all the facts, pinpointing the shooter. Well, if you would we'll waste precious minutes while that miscreant roams free. Well, if you will. Well, if you will waste. Ah, sure, whatever. Just get on with it quickly. Waste of time. Oh, it was even clipped by me? That's great. I'm so glad I met I clipped that because it's so funny. It's so funny. Spider. <laughs> it's so quotable, you know? God, it's such a quotable moment. Sorry, I couldn't remember which one I had to click. And it was so funny because it's such an important piece of evidence and Tony was just like, spider. Well, as far as I can tell, it put the shooter here. Ah, uh, that was my position on the stage. My place on the stage. Sorry, angel face, but you're reading the wrong lines. Think again. Try again. What's your reasoning? See? Um, the body and bullet placement. There's one, three, two. Wait, that's within the one to three meters distance from the body. Yes, it indeed likely. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, it's indeed likely the shot originated here. Pinpointing the shooter. Aye, oh, yeah, this must have been the spot, right? The gun must have been fired from my ear. Nowhere else. What an extraordinary coincidence, ladies and gents, one in a million, the very spot I occupied on stage. By bad luck, by chance, by a twist of fate. Of course, it's of no relevance whatsoever, as I expected. This has been an utter waste of time. A fool's errand, irrelevant trivia. Oh, not the eye... Sparkle. On the contrary, this is extremely relevant information. A relevant truth. Pardon me. When the pit shot was heard, it was pitch black on stage. Shot in the dark. Shooting the victim dead with a single bullet in total darkness is bordering on the impossible. Slain by a single slug. Sensational sniping. Bordering on perhaps yet a lack, my glorious life was taken with one such miserable slug. Whatever you may say, nothing can bring my darling back. Oh, fate, you are a cruel mistress indeed. Glory is gone, a single slug, love is lost. No, very true, nothing will bring this blaze back to life, but the final curtain has already fallen, there is nothing more to say. Okay. Better look for the gun that Clegg used, eh? 
An excellent idea, and while you do that, I'll set about finding a new way into your heart. Uh, you all? Yes. I've got it. The murder weapon is the gun, all right. The very revolver. Brava! Brains and beauty. What am I going to do with you? Keen wit, good looks. Give over. I'm not special. The barrel of this very gun carried the bullet that pierced my beloved's heart and stole it from me. Lead led to death. Boom. When you examine the evidence, this is exactly what you shall find. Find the facts. So now you must ask yourself which scoundrel was holding the gun. Face Blacker. There he is. Face Clegg. Clocked Clegg. He's been knocked out. Well, he's still holding the gun. What is this accent? Gun in hand. Excellent work, Angel Face. What a what fantastic eyes you have. I know it's an accent, I just don't know where any of the accents I do are like from. So I'm just saying words. Perhaps you'd like to- Gross. Okay. I don't even want to read that one. No thanks, I think I pass. Gross. Pity. Still, at least now we have conclu conclusive proof that Clegg was in possession of the murder weapon. Caught gun in hand. Surely that's more than enough evidence to charge the rapscallion. Clegg did it. Let's not forget one rather crucial thing. Clegg was struck repeatedly in the back of the head. Repeated blows. Occipital battery. Hello? I'm not gonna be strong done streaming for a while. You wanna just show it to me now? I'm gonna mute my mic for a sec. TikTok and failed so bad. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, thanks for being patient. They were trying to do the Taylor Swift um, trend where it's like you lift my feet off the ground and spin me around, except <laughs> her friend didn't turn the right direction. And then, like, Maya dropped her friend, basically, but it was also in- instead of being sped up like it's supposed to be, they accidentally had it in slow-mo. It's like- it's- they really fucked it up. Anyway. It's- yeah, that's- that's such a good clip. I- the A5 streams were very fun. Um, anyway. Ha ha! Obviously, the boy did that to himself. self inflicted The back of the head? Sure. Let's assume for a moment that Clegg is guilty and that he knocked himself out to avoid suspicion. Hit himself senseless. Feign innocence. Fucking wild thing to do. If it were true, it would be very strange indeed. Makes no sense. Do you 
Lucy. Why, Lucy? Um, because it's stupid. Wouldn't be old that he were hit so many times from behind instead of just once. Indeed it would. Stunning. Just simply stunning. Uh, I'm not feeling so sure of myself now that you stopped waxing lyrical. Good, because there's no reason to assume a single blow would have knocked him out. How are you What are you talking about? However many times he hit himself, it was qu it's quite clearly self-inflicted. Very hard to believe that's true. There's something far more obvious but laying any attempt to look innocent. Lucy, if you were the murderer, what would you do to avert suspicion away from you? I didn't read the question that was actually being asked. I was just going off the I was just going off what they had been talking about, and I should have read the question because like I didn't answer it. <laughs> Well, if I were trying to make it look like I hadn't done it, I'd just chuck the gun that chuck that gun away for starters. Tata gun. Exactly. Whatever plot you came up with to avert suspicion from you, it would not involve holding the gun. A diversion. No, however you look at it, Clegg would have disposed of the gun before knocking himself out. The orders are wrong. Tot tot, you make assumptions about knowing the man. The man's a twerp. I tell you, he is a fool, a complete imbecile. Clegg is a clot. That's why he didn't have the brains to figure out that he should dispose of the gun. It's really quite obvious. He is the killer. I see. Well, there's nothing more we can say on the matter then. Unfortunately not, the man is witless. And that's all there is to it. Well, I think that settles it. Plague is the killer, there can be no doubt. What planner have you been on all this time, eh? Let's recap. The victim, Gloria Blaze, was killed by a single bullet. And the person found holding the gun was none other than, than Plague. However, Plague was hit by someone not unconscious. And I've been trying to make it look like I hadn't done it. He'd have never kept hold of the gun. But he's a complete clot, he hasn't the brains to work that out. The other thing we know for certain is where Miss Blaze was shot from. That's where you were standing on stage during the performance, Mr. Strappin. Yes, by a cruel twist of fate, my beloved seems to have been shot from the very spot I stood. The problem is in the timing. To shoot someone from anything other than point-blank range in total darkness is bordering on the impossible. And it was a fluke. This is completely irrelevant. However, never mind all that. I've just remembered something of vital importance. Hey, what's that, eh? Out of the blue? Uh, the death threat. There was a threatening note, was there not? Eh? With that additional evidence, you will have no choice but to acknowledge Clegg must be the killer. Seems we have some more investigating to do. We already found it. Indeed you do. Find the death threat. I fucking did already. Now picture the scene. Oh fuck. Clegg falls in love with blah 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 blah. Consumed by self-pity and rage, he sends a death threat to the poor defenseless flower. Gross. So where's this death threat now then, eh? Somewhere at the scene of the crime, naturally. I found it already. One of the detectives who came to the theatre told me of it, I'm quite sure it's there. But you haven't actually seen it with your own eyes, though. Ah, uh, I don't need to see it to know that what artless piffle Clegg no doubt came up with. Now go and find it. Find the note that contains the equipment of death threat. Okay. Hey, Prof. I reckon this must be the death threat. Don't you? Death threat. I think was it in the right place. Excellent work, Lucy. That's for the Prof to decide, Mr. Shrappin, not you. Oh, painful 
you'll pay for the train. I see. There's a bit of a bunny that says that. Train, I mean. It makes it sound like Clegg and Flies had a fling or something. Utter tosh. Glory only had eyes for me. In that case, it seems probable that Mr. Clegg was not the author of the note. Not Clegg. Th that's one possible explanation, yes. So, were it that Miss Blaze had done the dirty on them then, eh? Of course, it's so obvious the killer must have been in a member of the audience. Gloria had countless fanatical followers. Picture the scene. A fan consumed with jealousy over Gloria's engagement to me. Oh, my poor beloved, how you shook like a little lamb whenever you opened one of your their tasteless letters. The scrap of paper we've been using over is quite obviously a death threat from an unhinged fan. Um, according to strapping, this is a death threat from one of the It's crazy fans. My well, prof will have to put everyone from the audience for questioning. It will be a little year. Yep, that's the phone. Excuse me, Mo. Oh, really fucking good. Wow. Well, Alright. So tell me, are you two involved? Lovers? A couple? I beg your pardon. You must be, surely. We- uh, excuse me, sir. We established last week that this is- that they're both gay. That's what we established last week. Happy Pride. <laughs> Do I have to read this? Do I have to read this? God. Ew. <laughs> Gross. It's really bad. A true stallion would be sure to get a little frisky cooped up here with such a young filly. A fine young filly. Ew. Offensive to women. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Wrong way around, though, dude. Uh, if I were her, I should take it as an insult to my femininity that nothing has happened. Uh. Uh, I think if Alfendi should turn- You know how Alfendi has, like, episodes? And, like, it turns into, like, he has his little Jekyll and Hyde moments? Can we have one of those? Right now? Can he kill him? Oh god. It's so. Ew! Ew! Ugh! <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's just something like that's making my skin crawl like really bad. Ugh. Oh, Fendi just wants to leave. <laughs> He's like, can this be over? <laughs> I'm just trying to hang out in my office and solve mysteries. Alfendi's <laughs> literally just like, I created a box, like a fancy little box, to just like, not have to interact with humans while I solve my little crimes. Can you stop speaking to me? <laughs> ah! You're a red-blooded male, aren't you? What if he just said no? <laughs> Mr. Strappin, the way of manager on the phone, there's a famous chap who wants words with you at your office. Gracious, is that the time? It must be the, that bore of a two billion pound film I'm supposed to be acting in. To, to Bill? Naturally, they wanted me as the headliner. What was it now? A pirate film, I think. Well, that sounds very important. You won't want to keep them waiting, I imagine. Mm, well, seeing as we've proved who the murderer is, I shall take this opportunity to take my make my exit. Well, that's all then. What we're saying, yeah? I'm looking forward to it already, precious angel face. Uh, well, I do, but... Not to bring me Okay. Alright, sounds good. Stacy Baker to you. Adieu. Ugh. Ugh. The vibes are so bad. Ugh, that man gets right up my nose. Do you really think he did it? Thank you, JJ. Yeah, let's talk about... <laughs> let's just... Uh, 
preferable. Highly preferable to this. Without a shadow of a doubt, he's terrible. We still have a number of riddles to solve, but he's a very intelligent adversary and very slimy. I can't do a golem voice, but yes. Oh, huh? He doesn't seem that sharp to me. Yeah, he's very, he very carefully and deliberately diverts the conversation away from the most crucial point. Most crucial point? What's that then? Whether the blaze was actually short in the dark or not. Oh. Sorry, I was just thinking. <laughs> Why are you saying that blaze weren't short when it were all when it all went dark? Do you recall from where we concluded the shot was fired from? Aye, from where Strappin had been standing on stage, weren't it? Yes, and to hit blaze from that distance with a single shot in the dark would be impossible. But we know that's where she went down in from, don't we? So we do. There's no disputing where the shot was fired from. But when the shot was fired, that's a detail about which we still have some room for manoeuvre. What you mean? When it were fired? I mean, if it only if only it hadn't been pitch black, Blaze would have been an easy shot from that location. Do you see? Now, when do you think the shot that was fired that killed Blaze? I don't know why I was hesitant about that, but like, yeah, duh. By Akbroth, not during the performance. Exactly. You know what, that was actually the first thing I thought when we first started playing it, but when they introduced the second gunshot, I got confused. I assumed that when she was calling for help, I think she called for help and then there was a second gunshot. I think that I assumed that she had already been shot and was like calling for help and then when the second gunshot got introduced, I was like, oh, I guess she hadn't been shot technically yet. Yeah, before the performance, we can do Bernie style. We know where the shooter was standing, and we know there was the noise of a gunshot. When you consider those two facts together, there's only one logical conclusion. Gun used in the final scene of the play were the real gun. Correct. Unbelievable. You can be almost certain that there's... That's the truth of the matter. But this is just a theory at this stage. A game theory. We need to find some actual evidence that Blaze was actually shot while the performance was underway. Oh, hey, Prof, I'm on it. I'm not. So, it could... I found a remote control, Prof. Ah, uh, that must have been used to detonate the squib and burst Blaze's bladder of fake, fake blood. Blaze should have, would have been the one to push the bu button, wouldn't she? So how come it was chucked away here in the bin? Yes, yeah, so what does this, that tell us, do you think, Lucy? What does the remote control being in the rubbish bin signify? Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if it was that one or the other one. Why would Strapping have thrown the remote away? Um, to stop Blaze pressing the button. What is it? That 
wouldn't have helped him in any way, would it? More than showing us that someone threw it away, the stage switch being here shows us something didn't happen. Oh. I didn't realize that's how the switch worked. I'm sorry, that's on me for, I guess, not knowing how switches work. Oh, never mind on that one. I just was misunderstanding, I guess, the answers. I assumed, for some reason, my brain was like, oh, if he threw it away, it wasn't used, but I guess not. If the robot's here in the bin, then the chances are Blaze never pushed the button at all. There you have it. I had it before, I just fucked it up. Despite failing to trigger the squib, blood poured from Blaze's wound during the performance. Because she were actually shot with a real gun. And we have an entire audience as witnesses. That's hard evidence, isn't it, Pro? Prof? Proof? Yes, well done. <laughs> Let's hand the remote over to the forensics and have them confirm the button was never pressed. I'll go ask them right this minute. Weird thing to, for forensics to be able to confirm. I've been and asked him. Thought it was a weird thing to ask him, actually. I've been thinking when I was gone, why would you want to kill someone in front of all them witnesses, eh? That Lucy is the biggest mystery of this case. If his aim had been slightly off, he'd have given himself away in an instant. Eh, it's hard to say what was driving him, I must say. It's hard to see, not hard to say. Well, there's no point in worrying about what we don't know yet. Let's continue our investigation based on what we do know. Blaze was shot with a real gun in the final scene of the performance. Now we've established that. The events that followed in the darkness start to fall into place. Oh, ah, oh, there's plenty of questions needed answering now. That's changing. Firstly, Blaze's scream. And secondly, the gunshots that rang out in the darkness. Let's get to the bottom of those two curiosities. The accents, they're shifting. They're changing location. So, if Blaze were dead as a doornail, already before it went dark, she'd have had a hard job screaming, eh? The most obvious explanation is that it was someone else who screamed. So, Lucy, who do you think actually let out the scream in the darkness? But if it weren't Blaze who screamed, the only other possibility is that Nox Lass. Right. Either strapping nor Clegg could have convincingly imitated a woman's scream. Said who? But that's not quite the whole story. We already have evidence to suggest that strapping told Knox to scream. We do? Yes, it's all there, the suspect statements. Which statement tells us when strapping most probably told Knox to scream? Help! The strap-in bumped into destiny. Sounds dead fishy, that does. Dead sus. Agreed. Knocking her over would have given him ample time to tell her what he wanted her to do. S what? So Knox was an accomplice then? This too is Yuri. Not exactly. If she were really his accomplice, they would have plotted the whole thing together from the start. Ah. Oh. Why, didn't they? That's a bit odd, isn't it? It seems there's yet more to this case than meets the eye. I'm never gonna stop saying dead sus because it was like one of the funniest ways to like, I think, start a game. So I am just incorporating that into my vocabulary, especially for this character. Dead sus. Let's get this straight. If Blaze were killed during the performance, where were the shot that everyone heard when the lights went out? Thank God, JFK. I'm so glad. My guess is that it was fired by stripping as part of the whole deception. And there's sure to be evidence on the scene somewhere that proves he fired a second shot. I'll best get licking then. I...
I don't think this is it, but let me... This must have been one of yours. Strapping must have used this rec... Let do that. Strapping must have used this replica gun, no? I bet that's it. Let's see, the prop gun was found by the set. He would have had to work his way around to knock a Clegg from out Clegg from here, then, if you're right. If there's evidence you can find that would support this idea, Lucy. Boop. These oil stains are a bit telling, ain't they? Ah, yes, the, this must be from the oil used to lubricate the replica gun. Why was the gun swimming in oil? That's a lot of oil. It must have been running his hand along the back of the set here to feel his way back into the dark. No doubt. That's how Strapping worked his way over to where Clegg was. He groped around in the dark until he located him, then hit him and knocked him out. Nasty stuff. This shows us that the person who had the replica gun passed this way. In other words, it's proof that Strapping crossed behind the back of the stage in the dark. We're getting closer, Prof. He honed in, on, honed in on the truth, it seems. And proved that Strapping's the killer. Oh, that's a phone. I'll get it. They really love to have someone go off screen, fade to black, and then just come back on screen. It were forensics. They said the remote switch weren't pressed, just as we thought. Investigations have confirmed the switch was not pressed on the day in question. Again, I don't know how they knew, but cool. That cinches it. Oh, JJ. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, sleep well and have a good night. Shall I call strapping in? Yeah. Yeah, my receipt to Google Play. Thanks, guys. There's something that's still troubling me a little, but... I'm sure we've got enough. Yes, call him in. Yeah, that's convincing. Okay. I can't wait. Nope. I can't tell you how much I've been waiting for this. Okay. I wasn't expecting you to see me. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you'd want to see me quite so soon, precious. Couldn't wait. Second date. Don't get the wrong idea, Mr. Strappin. As if. Now, don't be bashful. I like a woman who takes the bit between her teeth. I'm telling you, this is strictly business. Mr. Strapping, if I may, you have managed to identify the criminal responsible for murdering your fiance. I did the crook. I knew it. Didn't I tell you it was someone from the audience, eh? Tell me the wretch's name. Killer in the crowd. The killer, Mr. Strapping, da da da, was you. Oh, precious. If you want to get my attention, there are much more effective ways, you know. No, Mr. Strapping. Lucy is quite serious. You killed his place. Deadly serious. What a disappointment. You really are an artless pair. I've already laid it out for you on a platter. The killer was hiding in the audience. He or she made their way. Just say they made their way. You're using their in the rest of the sentence. Their way onto the stage in the darkness and pulled the trigger. With one fateful bullet, my darling's heart was pierced and our love rent asunder. Oh, whoa. Sorry, but that doesn't stack up. It'd be almost impossible to have Gilda with a single shot. And here's why. the gunshot was heard, the stage went out to dark darkness. How could anyone have taken aim when they couldn't even see what to aim at? Oh, 
Yes, I remember you suggesting that idea before. In which case, surely the accusation of my own guilt meets with a sticky end, no? On the contrary. I have to yawn! <gasps> it is precisely the fact that Miss Blaze was killed with a single bullet that incriminates you, Mr. Strapping. I'm quite sure I don't follow an explanation, sir, if you please. Shot the gun during the show. If Miss Blaze weren't killed during the blackout at all, were she? No, her end life ended a few moments earlier. On stage, during the finale of the show in front of a full house. What a fantastical idea! Your imagination is wasted on this job, Precious. You should end in your notice and become a dramatist. There's not... There's not imagined about it! Then pray tell, how do you explain the blood-curdling scream that pierced the darkness? Every member in the audience in the full house of which you speak heard a woman scream. I'll be willing to bet it were Miss Nogs that screamed. What? Rot! You're clutching at the straws now. Everyone actually there said it was Gloria who screamed. That's just cause when the lights came back up they saw Miss Blaze lying dead on the stage. Faced with a scene like that, who would have just assumed that were the last that screamed? And just before the lights went out, you bumped into Miss Knox. It's in Mr. Clegg's statement. That's when you told her one you were going to need to scream once you'd cut the lights. You are quite deluded. This is all utter fabrication. We're not deluded at all. You know it's the truth. Stop trying to deny it. I have absolutely no recollection of what you're saying. Your so-called evidence is all circumstantial. Do you actually have any conclusive proof at all? What if you... No, this happened the other day. I haven't seen a shred of hard evidence. Oh, we've got proof, all right. How about this for starters? Oh God. the smudge I don't know which one they're asking me for I mean nothing will happen so I've got the oil stains the remote control and the gun this doesn't feel great yeah that didn't work hi Nate uh I know what we concluded, I just don't know which one you're asking for. Come with Oh, it's the it's remote. It's the remote. I'm sorry. Isn't that the squeeb remote? I, which should have been carried by Miss Blazefur to push the button in time with you firing the blank. But Mr. Strappin, but Mr. Strappin, the button were never pressed. So it's a bit hard to explain where all that blood came from in the final scene, eh? No, that can't. There's only one explanation for it that makes any sense. I think you know what that is, don't you, Mr. Strappin? She were bleeding because you shot her with a real gun. Clearly, Gloria just forgot to take the remote control with her at that time. There's no way out of this, Mr. Strap, and you can't explain it away. You shot her, no questions. Ah, oh. um, <clears throat> nonsense. Mystery solved. Encore? The fuck you mean, encore? You what? 
You can't do that. That's against rules. You overwhelmed me before with your barrage of illogical claptrap. But now I've recovered my pose. I'm not guilty. I was afraid. Clegg was behind the whole thing. I don't care much for your constant ducking and diving, Mr. Strappin. I had no idea. When I pulled the trigger, I thought it was... I thought it was the repli replica gun. But, oh, what a cruel error. I only realized my mistake after the fatal deed was done. It was the recall that alerted me to the truth. Oh, that's just about enough of your laws. You can't trick us anymore. He's evil. He's evil now. Oh, but my dear Lucy, he's telling the truth now. Ah, oh, crikey, not again. Someone very carefully arranged for the real gun. They look exactly like the replica to be there at the scene. <coughs> yes, that part of all this was very much a premeditated crime. But everything that followed, it wasn't driven by lust, nor by heartache, nor by insanity. No, what followed was nothing more than an ad lip scramble to hide the truth. Um, now, Prof, you're not saying there was someone else involved that switched the guns over. Well, yes, there was someone else involved, the mastermind behind this whole charade. So was I right earlier when I said there were two people involved? Just the sort of killer I like. Come on, buddy. You're, you're ra getting rather carried away in your soliloquy. But despite your crazed demeanor, I believe you've got to the truth, Inspector. Indeed, the root of all this evil is Clegg. He's the one who switched the guns. After all, the man was head over heels in love with Gloria. Bit of a fun way to show, isn't it? Why, then, you ask, did he feel the need to kill Gloria in front of a theater full of onlookers? The answer, of course, is staring you all in the face. Hey, enough of this high and mighty, you know, it's all attitude, eh? You're the guilty one, don't forget. Guilty? Moi? Au contraire, I am a victim in all of this. Listen to you two, yapping like dogs. Am I going to have to cut out your tongues to get you to shut up? There's no... There's, there's really no need for violence, Inspector. We can cut out his tongue. I... This guy, he doesn't need he doesn't need that. Oh, keep your hair on, prof. So scrappy. E e yes. What is it, sir? You pulled the trigger of what you thought was a replica gun and shot a bullet right through Blaze's heart. Then to avert suspicion, as you cut the lights and had knock scream. As you fired off a blank. And just to be sure, you fumbled your way over to Clegg, knocked him out, and put the gun in his hand. Isn't that how it happened? To the letter! Bravo, Inspector! Brilliant deduction! You're admitting it now? I didn't think you'd phone so it that easy. So you're a coward as well as a crook. What are you talking about? I did it for justice. Switch your direct your scorn at Clegg. He switched the guns. He is the true criminal. I'm kind of move things. My elbows hurting. Clegg switched the guns. Don't make me laugh. Remember Blaze's dead body. And that, that mouse of a man doesn't have a the flair for such an inspired death. I hate to say this because it reveals more about me than it does about this video game but um sometimes evil alfendi says things and sometimes even regular alfendi says things and i just have to sit with the fact that like it is a little bbc sherlock You know? Like, most Sherlock Holmes- BBC Sherlock is a very specific iteration of Sherlock Holmes. And sometimes Alfendi says things, and I have to sit in that knowledge that this is a little bit... 
<laughs> JFK, leave me alone. You know what I mean. He's evil Al Fendi, but he has like the exclamation point like this. Like evil Al Fendi. Like that. Exactly, you understand. Well, I, the slightly more red-haired, like when he's having an episode, like I don't know if he like sees himself as any different, but like uh, Florence was like, oh, the other one. So I, I'm calling him Evil Alfendi because I can't think of a way to combine Evil and Alfendi. Evil Fendi, that's not really great. Anyway. What I was saying, sometimes a little BBC Sherlock, and we I have to live with this connection. Inspired death, eh? Pull it the fuck together! Oh yes, inspired and beautiful. The final scene. The audience on the edges of their seats, and then pow! Shot through the heart. Blood spilling everywhere. The stage awash with crimson glory. Magnificent. Wouldn't you agree? Is this fellow quite all right? What are you talking about? There's not magnificent about murder, Prof. Don't you see? No, I do not. And I don't much want to. Not the way you're seeing things right now, anyhow. Ah, uh, at least you're lucky. Think, Lucy. Who is the mastermind behind this crime? And what is the evidence that proves it? You've seen the evidence already. It couldn't be more plain. I feel like JJ, like, <laughs> saying that it was Gloria kind of messed with my head because now I'm like, was it Gloria? Did she do this? I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh my god. I feel like I'm going nuts. I thought the I thought the note was going to be in here. I don't know. Oh my god, what do I do? I think it's bright clegg, but 
I don't know. Like, it doesn't make any sense for it. He could have just framed him. Then it would require him. Did he frame. frame Strapping, who then framed him? Nox just doesn't feel involved enough, but like I think there were a few cases few characters last week who I was like, this char this person is not at all involved. Let's try this. Nope, that wasn't it. What do you say? Do you just okay, Christ. Great. Not on your nele. Stop figuring you two all stop you myself. God, what is it? It's the fact that there's two, so I can't even figure out, like... Am I stupid? Am I missing something? Am I missing something? start guessing randomly. There's probably too much to just like go through slowly, but you know. Okay, let's assume she didn't do it. I kind of can only foresee me continuing to kind of guess somewhat randomly. Which isn't the way to do it. Alfendi is going to kill us both. Was it actually... Is 
so it leaves Gloria and Strapping, but like what about what? I don't I feel like if I had a better No. If I had a better idea what the evidence I was supposed to use, that might help, because like Fuck, I don't know about the I meant more of that he was holding a gun. <sighs> this doesn't make any sense, but why not, right? Eventually I have to get it right, mathematically. This is a fun stream. Oh, we got it! <sighs> it was Gloria Bly. She was a master mom post this whole server. That's the remote control that proves it. Are you normal yet? No. We've really lost the plot now, precious. Gloria is the victim of this terrible crime, not the perpetrator. Lucy's. Lucy's absolutely right. Is he normal again? Thank goodness you're back, Prof. He's normal. Sorry if I alarmed you. Oh god. I need a drink. My head hurts so much. Yes, the remote control we found discarded in the rubbish bin. I believe Miss Blaze threw it away on purpose. What a ludicrous suggestion. Why on earth would she do such a thing? Miss Blaze planned all this right from the start. She was responsible for switching the guns. She knew she was going to be shot dead that day. So she had no use for the remote control. So JJ was right, is the thing. That's just... I, I don't understand. Why would Gloria orchestrate her own murder, for goodness sake? Yes, what was going through Miss Blaze's mind to make her take such extreme measures? Maybe you suck. The answer to that is written in a message which you have already seen with your own eyes. What message? The message that Miss Blaze wrote to you and left for you to find. Lucy, would you care to explain? It's so funny that her ears were gone. You'll pay for betraying me. That's what Ms. Blaze wrote, and she meant that message for you. Is it starting to make sense now? Not the affair, but she wouldn't have killed herself like this because of a silly affair. You got to be out of your mind. I think it's fair to say Ms. Blaze was not of sound mind. Driven to madness as she was, Miss Strapping by you. Well, Al, are you here? Oh, hello, Detective Lawson. Have you got some new info for us? Yes, I have. The bla lads have found a typewriter in Blaze's room, identical to the one used to type the note you found. And they've proven that it was Blaze who ordered the gun, too. I don't like that voice for him. That's the proof we needed. Lovely job. Could have guessed the victim of the, was the mastermind behind the whole thing. I'm amazed you figured it out. JJ, within two seconds, which is why I was trying not to think of it too much. <laughs> so tell me exactly who did figure it out, hmm? Uh, what you mean? The prophet may have called us, who else? That's what I'm asking you. I don't follow. Sorry, I did mean to be rude, but I'm going to have to leave. Oh? 
It's not like you to head off so early, Prof. Everything all right? Yes, perfectly. There's just a program I'd like to see on television, so I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, this is a huge mood. Love avoiding things. Honestly, the thing was, like, I was thinking about it, but because JJ had said it so early on, I was trying not to consider it in, like, a really serious way because I didn't want to get fixated on the possibility. So I just pretended it wasn't an option. Which, like... I considered it a few times, but, like, I wasn't letting myself consider it, like, genuinely, so maybe that wasn't my best choice. Okie dokie. See you later. Oh, hell, nice work. But the prof's jiggered at all that excitement. Excitement? What do you mean? I'll tell you what I mean. When he started getting a row with his questions and that, he changes. It ever so sudden when it happens. I'll see. And how exactly does he change? That wasn't right, but also don't fucking tell this guy. Like you wouldn't believe. The start as his hair goes all wild and disheveled. It changes colour. It hangs down in front of his voice. It's that creepy it is. Makes him look evil, it does. I see. Anything other about his hair changes. Anything other about that his hair that changes about him. What did I just open? Oh, aye, his whole personality. It's the worst bit of it. It's the way he says stuff, I suppose. He's all high and mighty and mardy and, well, just plain scary, if truth be told. I mean, do you know what he said to me and that fellow that were here before we were arguing? Like, stop telling people this, dude! It wasn't that big a deal. No, what? He said we were yapping like dogs and he'd have to cut out our tongues. Like, Lucy, pull it the fuck together. And he was being serious! You can't blame the man for having a sense of humor. Literally, don't be such a narc. It weren't funny. He's so intense on telling you, it's dead frightening. It must be very difficult. Aye, well, that dark side is just starting to get up my nose. He's just far away from a Lucy Lampin. Well, try not to lose your patience. Oh, I'm trying hard. By the way, Al doesn't ever come out with any unfamiliar names when he's like that, does he? Eh? You know, he doesn't start talking about people or places that have nothing to do with the case. Um, no. Can't say he does. I'll tell you something he did say, though. He said death was inspired and beautiful. Really? Why are you so interested, I know I. Oh, no reason, really. It's just... Well, if he ever does mention any strange names when he's like that, be sure to let me know on the quiet, okay? Yeah, that's suspicious. Dead sus. On the quiet? Yes, it'd be better for Al that way. How come? He just would, trust me. No. Well, okay, if you say so. Lucy, no. Just make sure he doesn't find out you're reporting to me. Lucy? Lucy? Lucy, don't. Alright, we're gonna keep going, but we're not gonna be able to finish this one. Eh, yeah, mind if I bond you, Nanya? Hello, Dustin. That time of day already? Nah, I ain't come to do the cleaning just yet. I got a funny story that might be interested in us all. Oh, what's that then? The walking corpse, I call it. You believe in that sort of thing. Don't be daft, Dustin. A corpse is a corpse. Tell us done, I will know better at walking than one. You reckon? Well, me big bruv saw one with his own eyes. And what's more, it's possessed, being controlled by a demon. Intriguing indeed. Dustin, tell us more. Aye, right, come on. Oh, you got me hooked on this tale. Come on now, let's hear it. Yeah, he's got, not only does he have mental illness, his family has a history of mental illnesses and he needs to have an episode sometimes. Sometimes you have an episode and that's okay. He needs to go like have a moment. Leave him alone, nerd, Lucy. Don't be like, don't be, don't be spilling secrets. I uh, thought you might said that. I got the whole thing written down here in this file. I love no doubt with you two will figure out what's what with it. Don't you worry, Dustin. Every puzzle has an answer, as they say. 
and the prof always find it. Puzzle in my game? Good to hear. And if you help me, brov out with while you're at it, there'd be diamond. Your brother, Dustin. How is he involved? The latent fa no, like literally, the latent family has a history of mental illness. Like when you go to like a doctor or a fascinating case. That's how the prof describes it. But fascinating weren't the word. More like plain frightening. It would deep in the South American jungle, in a tiny cliff top hill. The victim were an archaeologist. He had an axe planted in his brow. Not an archaeologist. No. There were four suspects. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't read that line, but I was nervous. Nearby villagers were saying it was the work of a demon. But demons don't exist. I was sure of that. Once we finished working on this case, though, I were a bit wiser. Demons do exist. Oh, my. I don't know about some of these designs. I don't know if I'm gonna... I don't know if I love some of these designs. Anyway, you know when you go see a, a, like a therapist and they ask you, does your family have a history of mental illness? The answer for these folks is yes. Oh yes. Um. Well, let's get through as much as we can. Hmm. Sorry. The squeaking of the maybe clarinet was like, I have the music pretty quiet, so I just I thought I heard a voice because of the squeaking, and I was like, hello. I was like, uh, am I hearing things now? I see. Oh, it's a saxophone. I'm sorry. It's so quiet for me so I can, like, focus. And so it doesn't go through to my mic. Dustin did a good job of talking us into this one, didn't he? What do you mean? Let me explain the case a bit. A small group of archaeologists were carrying out a dig at an ancient site in a so the South American jungle. What part of South America, bitch? Oh, fuck you. The day after they commenced work, the body of the group's leader, a Dr. Ar Archieology. Ar wait, Dr. Ar I have to say this is not in an accent first. Dr. Archieology. Dr. Archieology was discovered. Archieology. Victim, 55. Male. Murdered professor of archaeology. A major word a world archaeologist credited with many important findings. However, rumors abound of him taking others' glory and fabricating discoveries. Murder, isn't it? Well, this is what we know. I don't love this. Ology and his crew had made what was just thought to be be a very significant discovery, a curious stone idol. Now, back at the hotel, the team asked the proprietor if he had a safe place where they could store their finds. He recommended a small hut at the top of a nearby cliff. Oh, I. Cliff tops provide natural defenses. Defenses, don't they? Defenses? Defenses, don't they? I'll remember that from second year geography. That evening, a local who'd been helping out at the, on the dig presented to the team with some homemade liqueur or liquor. Liquor, yeah. Keen to celebrate their great find, Olaji and another member of the team started drinking. I don't love this. I can't say I like the vibes. It was the middle of the night that things started to go wrong. The phone rang at the front desk of the hotel with a call from the hut. It was Ologi on the line, screaming, It's a demon! It's going to kill me! Help! The proprietor rushed over to the hut, but the door was locked. Apparently, it's a special lock that only has only one key, which is impossible to duplicate. The proprietor, the, a man by the name of Micah Sas Sasukasa, Micah Sasukasa? Micah 
Maika Su. Oh, okay, yeah. I was getting the Su Casa, but I couldn't figure out the first part. I was like, okay, this is obviously your house at the end, but what's the beginning? My ca Mikasa. Okay, stupid. 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 I had no choice but to break the door down. Yeah, he must be a burly fellow then. Yes, but the scene that confronted him inside the hut would have made even the toughest men wince. What, what were in there, Prof? Oloji's dead body, with the axe that killed him still lodged in his skull. Nasty. An even more unbelievable turn of events followed. Oloji's lifeless corpse got up and lunged to attack. Give over! There were two witnesses, despite the apparent impossibility of the incident. I've got chills run down my spine now. The ensuing investigation revealed another interesting fact. The stone idol that he had found on the day had completely vanished from the scene. Apparently, it was possessed by a demon. Come on, Prof, you don't really believe it were the work of a demon, do you? That what was rumoured to be the case among locals in the area. Don't you think maybe we should leave well enough alone in this case, Prof? We can't. The local police are detaining one of the archaeologists who was asleep outside the hut. There you go. You see, there were no demon, it were a human. I knew it! Well, that archaeologist is Dustin's brother. Eh? What? Well, our Dustin? Who dropped all, all them papers before? Yes, our Dustin, the cleaner. It looks like the only way to help his brother is to identify the true culprit. Do they have... They wouldn't have jurisdiction, so they wouldn't be allowed to work on this case. But it also doesn't matter, so it's fine. In that case, let's get stuck in and hope it's not too bad, because I'm fucking nervous. My thoughts exactly. Sorry, I was just looking at something. So let's consider the possibilities. There are four suspects. The first, as we've already said, is Dustin's brother, Doug Scowers. Doug? Doug Cowers? Doug... Ca Doug... Ca sure. Doug Scowers, suspect 28, male, one of Olaji's research students. A research student becoming, studying to become an archaeologist. Though ambitious, he dislikes those who chase fame too eagerly. Eagerly. Dustin's brother. Brother. On the night of the murder, he and Olaji were drinking together alone. Dust in... Dust in cowers? Dust in... Dust in... Is a cleaning... I don't, I don't know, whatever, who cares a shit? Unfortunately, they got drunk and now Scours can't remember what happened. If he weren't Dustin's brother, I'd be more than a little suspicious of that. You should still be suspicious. Well, you see, he's still a suspect. We can't rule out the possibility that he's guilty. Scouring for dust. Okay, there we go. The next suspect is the owner of the hotel, Micah Sasukasa. Micah Sasukasa. That's not easy to say, and it's a stupid joke. Micah Sasukasa, suspect 61, male, hotel proprietor. The owner of the only hotel in the vicinity of the, of the site where Olaji was digging. Being so remote, the hotel makes little profit. A strong man, but timid. Oh, aye. Right. He's the fellow that recommended that he was the art in the first place, eh? Oh, no. Then we have a local by the name of Chico Carreta. Coretta, who lives in a village near the date side of the dig. 
Chico Carreta, suspect, 25, male, local guide for Olaji and Co. Um, I mean... Um... I'm sure it's Spanish. Because I can't think of anything. It's got to be another Spanish something. I mean, Chico just means boy. But so Coretta needs to mean something, but I don't know what it is. Uh, young man, well versed in the legends as, of the site, works as a guide on the account of his English ability. Estranged to be married. In, estranged to be married. Engaged to be married to a, a tista. He was working with the team as their guide. He is also the person who gave the liquor to Olaji and Scours. I hope, I don't necessarily want him to be like a murderer, but I do think that like, I would be cool if he drugged them and then just stole the idol back. Like, were they just gonna take it away? Come on now. That's not really how archaeology works, my guys. Not, not in present day, I should say. In present day, like, countries have, um, like, laws about dig sites and, like, who is allowed to take anything that they find and everything. Mmm, that's a bit fishy. Finally, there's Mar Mariana Atista. Mar Mariana Atista. I don't know this one. A young woman who works at the Sasukasa Hotel. Mariana Tista. Tista, whatever. Suspect 19, female, hotel employee and friend of Car Caretta. A young girl from Caretta's village who works in the hotel, being fluent in English. She taught Caretta the pair are engaged to be married. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. Let me see if I can Google how that's pronounced. I'm sorry. I don't think that'll be a spoiler if I just Google... Pronounce Coretta. Not an ad. Go away, Google Ads. Carreta. Carreta. All right. Carreta. There we go. She's the one who heard Ologi's dying screams over the phone. Almost doesn't look much like a murderer, I must say. That's all our suspects. There are a number of very peculiar things about this case, but the biggest mystery is how the murder took place. Aye, because when Su Sasukasa got to the hut, the door was still locked shut from the inside, weren't it? Yes, the only window in the hut is barred, making it impossible for anyone to get in or out that way. So where did the killer disappear to, Vane? Where, who, where indeed? Those are all the details we have so far. With so little information to go on, I'm sure you'll find it hard to guess who the culprit is. But still, what's your gut feeling, Lucy? I always start with your gut feeling, eh, Professor? Absolutely. Right, well, I can't say this case doesn't give me the willies, but I'll give you my best bosh. Let's, uh, investigate. I keep doing this first, because it's where my brain goes. I don't want to just start guessing. Right, let's see what we can deduce. About to just start guessing. That's not who I am. Do you think you'll be able to look around enough in five minutes? Ah, oh, no problem, prof. Ooh. Chopping block used by the hotel staff to chop up firework. Blocks are placed on top of the side of the blah blah blah. Okay. Door. Thick wooden door. Though Sasukasa broke it down, there is no question that it was locked at the time. There is evidence of that prints were wiped off the knob. Doug Scours. Scours was fast asleep and only woke when, a ro when roused by a police officer. Alcohol was found in his bloodstream in large quantities. Screw, a small screw made of pure brass. It's covered in mud and very dirty.
There it is. Hinges. Brass hinges affixed to the front door or and frame on the outside of the hut. One of the screws is missing. Screw hinge. Cool. There is a rafter damaged bee. There's a notch in one of the beams that supports the hut's roof. It is a newly craft it is newly crafted apparently by a thin wire or cord or some time. Was someone above and like lowered themselves down and then lowered themselves back up? Or walked in? That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, raptor damage A. There is a notch in one of the beams that supports the hut roof. It was newly created a quote, blah, blah, blah. Could they have... We can't see the roof, so that's probably not. Signs. Some signs once used at the hotel now being stored in the hut. Many are large, some even exceeding two meters in height. Local liquor, strong yet easy to drink local liquor, a gift from Car Carreta. It has, a, has spilt on the floor, leaving a stain. Coat hook, a metal coat hook affixed to the wall. It is large and sturdily built. Nothing was hanging on it at the time of the incident. Intercom, a direct connection to the hotel reception. Functional but old, the sound quality is poor. Fingerprints have been wiped off it. Is that how they called the hotel or is there also a phone? That must have been how they called. Fishing tackle. Angling equipment designed for catching very large fish, a complete set including rods, lines, and lures. So they could have used fishing wire to haul someone up into the rafters maybe? Suitcase. Oh, Lodgy's suitcase containing his archeological data and notes. Made of aluminum, it looks weighty. It remains unlocked. So maybe someone was up in the, the rafters hanging by fishing line. I don't know how that would work well, but you know. Covered in iron bars that make entry or exit through the window impossible. The stone idol would probably have just about fit through, though. If fit through. If they hauled someone up, then they could have put the idol outside. Crate bead, the, a crate labeled B, the lid has been removed, but the contents have not been taken. It creates a variety of ancient weapons. Crate A, the lid has been removed, but the contents haven't been taken, despite the value of all artifacts being considerable value. Oh, right, it's on a cliff. I forgot it was on a cliff. That's important. That would be good to remember. Crate C, a crate labeled Crate C. The lid has been removed, the contents taken. It is now completely empty. Crate D, a crate labeled Crate D. A crate labeled D, the lid remains nailed down firmly and the contents have not been disturbed in any way. Table, a plain table with two glasses on it. Photo notes. A crack in the idol's head annotates a photo of the stone idol in the notes. Olaji scours and Carreta's fingerprints are on it. Written notes. On Open on a page that reads stone idol crate. See, Olaji scours and Carreta's fingerprints are on it. Alright, and then just the corpse. Blood stain. The stain left by the massive hemorrhage the massive hemorrhage from the head a wound Olaji suffered it has taken on an elongated shape because he walked supposedly hut key constructed in a special way that makes duplication impossible this is the only key to the hut it was found in the victim's pockets corpse Olaji's dead body with the axe still lodged in his skull he would have died instantly and no other injuries are evident his jacket collar is ripped Axe, a splitting axe for making firewood. It appears to have been planted in Olaji's brow to, from squarely in front of him. All prints have been wiped off. And then I need the statements. So we have Doug, Micah, Chico, Mariana, Stone Idol. Maybe. Maybe! Chico brought us some liquor. It was great stuff. We called up the hotel for glasses, and Mariana brought them to us. 
I drank too much that night and fell asleep. I only stared when the couple woke me. I have no recollection of why I was outside the hut at all. All the other people are not going to have accents. Or going to have my accent. Basically. Mariana called me after 11pm and we went to the hut together. The door was locked. I know I'm right about this because Mariana tried it too. I looked around the hut, but there was nobody inside except Dr. Elogi. It was dark, but there was nowhere to hide in there. I'm certain it was empty. Like, I'm not gonna try for Spanish accents, just so we're clear. There are some Diablos at the, um, at the site. The stone statue is one of them. I tr tried to stop Senor Ologi from taking it. Now the Diablo has killed him. I gave Senor Ologi, Ologi some of my people's liquor. That is the last time I was in the hut. I went straight home to bed. Night is when Diablos come. Around 11 p.m., Dr. Ologi called on the intercom, frantically screaming for help. It's the demon, he said. I was too scared to go alone, so I called Mr. Sasukasa to come to the hut with me. The door was locked. Mr. Scours was out asleep outside. I saw it as well. A, the dead body got up and lunged toward us. It locked, knocked over the bottle on the table, so I know it was not an illusion. Oh, I feel so stupid. I'm like, maybe they... Blah, 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 blah. What if they used the, the dead body? How did the dead mo body move? There was probably some kind of pulley system with the fishing wire. Duh. How did that completely, like, just, like, not be part of my... Like, does that help me figure out who did it? No. But, like, that's probably how the dead body moved. That's something. But I do need to decide who I think did it. Can I just decide it's this guy and we'll just see what happens? Yeah. Let's just do that. Fuck it. Fuck it. Just mostly because I don't really... <laughs> I mean... My brain was like, oh, well, how'd they get in and out? Like, someone could have been hiding in here. But it's probably more likely that there was some sort of rigging. Oh, but that's really far. But, like, how else would he have walked, like, lunged forward? It had to have been some sort of, like, clear fishing wire situation, I think. I just don't want to name either of the kids. I'm sorry that not kids but like either of the locals it feels bad but like i don't this case might just feel bad so i don't know whose behavior do you find the most suspicious then lucy well a lot of people's but we're gonna go with this guy for now because he if i'm wrong they're not gonna do anything oh what makes you think that well it was you sasu 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 i can't with this name it was Sasukasa that told them to use the heart, where the murder happened in the first place. There must be some trick to the place he own that only he knows. Mm -mm, that's a shrewd idea. <laughs> but no such trick was found by the investigating officers on the scene. I find it interesting that apart from the stone idol, none of the crate's contents were stolen. Ah, Sasukasa were having some mumbled money trouble weren't actually, were they? Which, among other things, makes me doubt he's a man. Who oh, I think the culprit is. Careta the guide. Give over. That little lad. Don't you worry. Prof, do you worry a bit? Do you worry a bit about this case? Worried about, like, how it looks at all? Like, a little? Just a little? Are we worried about that at all? Yeah, so let's see. I'm... Good for you. 95.1% sure. Ooh. This isn't comfortable. I'd very much like to interview Mr. Careta in person. I wonder where we can find him. In South America, maybe. I might take us a while to track him down with, with him living in the middle of the jungle, eh? I'll just bob out and see what I can do. Eh, Prof, we're dead lucky. Careta's right here in town. Just so happens he's over doing a spot of sightseeing. Normal things to do after you murder someone. 
uncannily convenient, but still, let's not waste the chance to call him in then. Already done. He's on his way right now. Oh boy. I don't know if I like this. Good, then let's quickly go over what he we know about the man before he arrives. Well, he's an expert on the ancient sites and speaks some English. So if you were a good choice as a guide. Yes, it seems English speakers are in short supply in the village where he comes from. Because English isn't the language there. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Eh? Did you know this, prof? Looks like Carita and that estate at last are engaged to be married. Yeah, it says it on their profiles. <laughs> they do make a champion couple there, do? Yes, they seem like a good match. Shame is our prime suspect, eh? What if he wasn't? <laughs> What if that 4.9% were, were the right one this time? There he is, look. Right, let's get to the truth. Oh boy. Hello, you must be Mr. Chico Carreta, are you? Hola, you can call me Chico. I'm Al Fendi Layden, I'm an analytical investigator. Feel free to call me Al if that's easier. No, I'm Lucy. I'm the prof's assistant. It's nice to meet you, Al. Uh, Lucy. I can't remember his name, his voice, so... <laughs> so I hear you've come over to do some sightseeing. Mariana. Oh. Oh. She tell it to me that I come here. It's very nice. Well, we're very sorry to call you up call you in like this and mess up your holiday is no problem oh by the way careta literally means like mask or something i saw it when i looked it up let me double check careta spanish dick it means mask his name means like boy mask His name means boy mask. <laughs> like, that's not a pun. You're just saying this boy <laughs> has masks. Like, yeah. <laughs> no fucking shit. You're right. He does have a mask. Ugh. God, I'm so sorry, Chico. This is not awesome for you. Or for level five, if we're being honest. Not super great. Uh, what's up with the mask? Is my happy face. I'm just, I think I'm just gonna fix the grammar. I know, like, I shouldn't, but I'm uncomfortable reading it, so I'm going to. And you all have to deal with that, I think. Because it's not, like, hard fixes. I think my brain is going to just start fixing it anyway, because I have an editor brain. So, um, I think I'm gonna fix it. Crocky! makes him sound different and all with that thing on. It's not even on. It's just in front of his face. Hey, amigos, you want a gift? I buy these cookies before, just before. It's for you. Oh, fucking Christ. Oh, thanks very much. Very kind of you. Uh, isn't this a machine? It's tea. Isn't this the machine? It's tea, not Vicky's. What is mashing? It's not so mashing. It's tea, not Vicky's. Who knows what this Does anyone know what this means? I feel stupid. What does this mean? See, it's right here on the box in massive letters. Oh no, I made a mistake. I am a person who I don't actually love when anyone writes accents, um, mostly because, um, I just have sometimes a hard time reading it, and I think it depends on, like, the situation, but for a lot of times, I find writing accents ends up being a little more insulting than necessarily, um, the writer intends. Um, one of the few situations where I actually felt that it wasn't that it was adding something was because it was very deliberate. 
Um, if anyone has read, not to talk about literature at 11 p.m. at night, but if anyone has read Their Eyes Were Watching God, or is it Their Eyes Are Watching God, um, by Zora Neale Hurston. Zora Neale Hurston was an anthropologist. So when she, and one of her things was, like, one thing, one of her, like, topics of research was, like, um... I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly from high school was like like the the way black people spoke in different like regions and locations so in their eyes were watching God it is very deliberate and very intentional of the choice and that's not to say that like non anthropologists can't make this very deliberate choice with it but i think sometimes it's a little unnecessary like in video games it is one thing because if it is all written out and you want them to have a specific accent sometimes you can't tell because they aren't voice acted but in like novels and stuff i would i would simply rather that like instead of like phonetically writing out words you just said this character has a scottish accent and i'll figure it out in my brain um but i think it's something that you do have to be very careful about and especially when writing broken English, I feel like writing broken English is always so touchy. And I think one of the reasons I'm even more uncomfortable with it in this specific situation is because these designs, admittedly, they just said South America. And I don't have a great grasp on um, indigenous cultures of South America. I'm not loving it. So the... So, like, the combination of the two make me nervous, as I have not done enough research to know if these are- these designs are, like, okay? You know, the designs I'm not entirely sold on, um... So, it's the combination of, like, the designs and the- and the broken English and, um... This guy potentially being a murderer where it's just like, oh, oh, e, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about it. I don't know. I don't know about all that. It's, it's all three in combination. Yikes. Oh, not another mask. How many of them things have you got? Oh, have you got? Am I correct? in thinking, Mr. Careta, that while your spoken English is excellent, you cannot read or write it. Um, you cannot read or write at all. So that... I speak. It's good, no? I understand you. You understand me, see? The three R's? Que? I don't know what that means. That joke is going over my head right now. I don't know enough Spanish for this. Um... So I can say that he doesn't know how to read, which means he couldn't have read that the idol was in crate C. So we do have that. We do have that. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. There's not to get excited about. So let's get down to business, shall we? To defeat some hinds. We're investigating the murder of Dr. Archie Lodgy. Archaeologi or Logi. I don't know how, I can't remember how I was saying it. As I'm sure you're aware, we would very much appreciate your assistance in the matter, Mr. Kareta. Would you be willing to help? See, si, see, si, I help you muchos. I fucking, I don't know. Excellent. So let's start by examining the corpse and the murder weapon, shall we? Ah, the walking corpse. That's the real mystery here. There's the hut door to consider, of course. Somehow the victim was killed in a room locked from within. It's not the work of humans. It's the work of a Diablo. A demon. Not human. Keep your scary ideas to yourself, please, Mr. Careta. That's the other thing. I'm not saying that, like, indigenous belief systems are, like, absurd. It's specifically all of these white people being like that's silly that's you know that could never happen it's um and the idea that the that the indigenous people can only believe in the demons and not like any other explanation 
it's it's the two, it's the combination. It's not great. <laughs> it's it's pretty rough. Um, the reason I'm being like this is because I deal with this every time Haley and I watch Supernatural, unfortunately. So like this is just like I just have this shit stockpiled, you know. It's just ready to go at all points in time. A fascinating theory. Perhaps I have demons myself. Ah, oh, come on, Prof. You got a mental illness. Right, well then. Let's start our investigation of the scene. What if he were just possessed? What if we end the game and it's just like, yeah, there's a demon. <laughs> He's got a demon buddy. <laughs> so where do you want to start? I've explained this already, but just in case I wasn't clear, I want you to find the murder weapon. See, of course you find the killing weapon first of all things. See, see. I, I know that. I'm, this is my job. <laughs> I know what to do. Bloop, bloop. Well, this is the Axia. There's your murder weapon. It's very easy to see, no? Indeed, it, after all, it is still lodged in the man's skull. Alright, alright, pardon me for stating the obvious. You know, I've seen this axe somewhere before. A sea, somewhere near the hut. Perhaps the killer picked up the axe from nearby. See if you might can figure out where it might have come from, Lucy. Yeah, exactly, JFA. Uh, JFA? JFK. It's it is the combination of like one or two of these things in one one or two is not bad. And if we had more characters, like because we're probably never gonna actually talk to Mariana, this is effectively our only character from this region. So it's like oh, oh, yikes, a doodle. Yeah, JFA, Justice for All. The hit game. What's an axe used for? Splitting wood, of course. Yes, an axe wouldn't have been able been out of place here. See, see, it's here where the axe was before. I am many times cutting the wood while Mariana she's talking with me. So the killer must have found oh, wrong voice. So the killer must have grabbed the axe from here before heading into the hot iron, eh? Let's see, it's like that. So would anybody have access? Have had access to this axe then? Ooh, tongue twister. See, of course, everyone in this place must take their turn to cut up the wood. Doesn't tell us a fat lot then, does it? Eh? No, perhaps not. Okay, let's turn our attention to something else then. Corpse. Now let's examine the body. Ugh, the body that moved and though it were dead, Germain. It's a Diablo who killed this man. It's a Diablo who can make who make the dead man walking. No, I still can't believe it. Let's see what our investigation uncovers. Come on, Lucy, examine the body. This is it. The walking corpse. The walking dead, if you will. Remember that old TV show? I can't remember <laughs> anything about it because I never watched it. Yes, it's a, yes, a grim sight. The axe still lodged in his skull. Rather deeply at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ver dead very quick this way, you know? Yes, I think so. Oh. No laughing matter, Mr. Careta. The 
question is, did the corpse really move or not? Is there any evidence to suggest that it did? Um, let's start with the blood stain. Well, it looks... Bleh. Well, there's this blood stain here, look. It's like the body were dragged across the floor, or dragged itself. It's certainly hard to deny that this bo that the body did indeed move from this chair after death occurred. Now we must ascertain whether it moved by itself or whether somebody moved it. It's the Diablo who punished. <laughs> Whoa! It's the Diablo who moves the dead, Senor. It is punishment of the gods. Dead folk can't move around. That'd be too frightening to contemplate. There's no point wildly speculating what but what happened. Let's simply continue our investigations. Light from inside. When the hotel proprietor and Mr. Ms. Atista came running to the hut, they found the door locked. Yet when Mr. Sasukasa broke the door down and went inside, the killer was nowhere to be seen. How did he or she pull that one off then, eh? Maybe it passed through the walls, or make it makes make, or it makes itself minuscule and squeezes through the bars of the window. Both rather far out ideas. Thank you, Mr. Careta. We're looking for something actually based in reality. I think. Not mm, awesome. It's a Diablo, this killer. It's not worried about reality. Let's take the possibilities one by one. We'll start by examining the window, shall we, Lucy? Not awesome, not an awesome case. There's just one window in the hut, but with these iron bars on it. No, there's got to be no way someone could have gotten through there. But if you are a Diablo and you make yourself a minuscule stone, minuscule of stone figure, then it is possible. See? No, it was a human who committed this heinous crime. And I agree, he did have the devil in his heart. So next we must examine the door. Perhaps there's a trick that allows it to be opened without the key. Right you are, Prof. Let's have a look. Oh, that sounds very good, Nate. Oh my god, that sounds incredible. You should send me a recipe. Also, happy birthday to the boy. That sounds so tasty. Oh, it's Friday. Got it, got it. I'll keep that in mind. Eh, it's a tough looking doll, this. Hmm. Oh wait, hmm. There's something rather odd about this door. Eh? What's that, Prof? Never mind it for now. It looks like the door was definitely locked. There can be no question of that. Couldn't there have been a duplicate of K, though? No, it's a very special lock. It's not possible to make the duplicate key. Senor Sukasa, he is all. <laughs> Senor Sasukasa, it's a. This last name. Struggle. Every time. He's always telling us it is so. It's something he's very proud of. And that one and only key was found inside the hut. I think we'd best take a look at that key, don't ya? A good idea, yes. Do you think you can find the key in the hut? To the hut, Lucy. Leave it to me, prof. We found it already. Don't worry, buddy. Know what the fuck is up? Not my first rodeo. It's interesting. I guess if you don't investigate beforehand, you have to find all this stuff during this little part, which I guess saves you time. But um, what if I do it this way? Okay, here. Oh, wait, now over here, bro. I found it. The key to the hawk. In the victim's pocket, was it? Very interesting. I don't suppose the killer could have gotten 
the killer. <laughs> I don't suppose the killer could have gotten the key back in her lodgy's pocket from outside after looking up. See, if the killer is a Diablo, yeah, 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 the killer. <laughs> we can't keep doing this. <laughs> we can't keep doing this, Ronnie. But the killer. What's up, Prof? Something that caught my eye when we were exam when we examined the door before. There's something peculiar peculiar about it. <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie. Peculiar? Oh there's something about the heart door that's quite different from other doors. See if you can spot it. <laughs> uh JFK, I think you're right. I support you in <laughs> the, the rants of an outbendy rants about the killer. <laughs> that's so real to me. Hey, Prof, there's a screw missing from one of the hinges here. And that's not the only peculiarity. The hinges themselves are unusual. That's what's been making it stand out to me. Really? What's funny about them? It's normal to fit hinges on the inside of a door. Think of a normal house. If the hinges were fitted on the outside, it would cause problems, wouldn't it? You can see why, presumably. Someone on the outside of this door could have opened it up by removing the hinges. Exactly. No matter how unusual the lock is, simply by removing the hinges anyone could get inside with ease. So what you're saying is, the heart wasn't necessarily the impenetrable fortress we've been led to believe it is. So... We've cracked it. I now realize something like this is possible. Incredible. It's a little too soon for celebrations, Lucy. We need some evidence that the door really was removed in that way. Look for the missing screw. That will likely tell us something. No problem, prof. We're literally looking at it. So, like, quite literally. Like, look down, prof. Just look. Look down. Tilt your head. Just a little lower. It's right there. It's right at your feet. Here's that screw, prof. So it was around here as we suspected. Good work, Lucy. <laughs> you are not always good at your job. But it's rather more grimy than I expected. Perhaps... Perhaps what? Never mind, let's have forensics check it out for us. I'll get it over them straight away on my hoverboard. Good, we'll continue investigating the scene while we await the results. We're still no closer to finding out how the corpse went walking, though, are we? No. That tantalizing mystery would seem to be the key to this whole incident. It's proof that the Diablo... It's coming here for us. Give over! There's no such thing! I'm scared of demons. Still, we have gleaned some very important information. The hinges. I can't wait for forensics to get back to us with their reports. I think you are wrong. Because the Diablo who makes this man dead? No, it weren't. It were a human that done this, like you or I. Why don't we consider the motive for the crime while we're waiting for Forensic to get back to us? The motive? Yes, there's a very obvious reason for this murder. Okay, let me figure it out then. Let me see now. The motive. Uh... This might be the last thing I do. There was a reason why Ologi was murdered. The crime had a clear motive. There's evidence here that points to it. That's what you're looking for. What? What? Where? Hold on. Is it like a nice looking pin? Tenth anniversary exclusive. Oh, it's the fact that it's exclusive that I think is going to be an issue. Is it hard enamel? It is hard enamel. Okay, that's good. I don't like soft enamel. Glitter isn't always great for hard enamel. 
But this looks all right. No, you're good. I, I do appreciate knowing. I appreciate it a lot, actually. This evidence here that there's evidence here that points to it. That's what you're looking for. You know I like Mark. <laughs> I just I'm sorry, Ronnie. I just soft enamel doesn't do it for me. I got a few pins from zines recently that were soft enamel, and I was just like, oh. There's been a few where I think soft enamel has worked, but for the most part, it's a texture thing. Like, it really bothers me. <laughs> oh, you do need your doom earrings back. Yeah, I'll give them to you when I see you next time. Uh... This crate is empty. The killer, the killer, must have stolen whatever went inside. And what do you think was inside that crate? The killer. I gotta go find the, that compilation of her talking about the killer after this so I can just listen to her talk about the killer. It's so real to me. It was a stone idol in there. That's what were in the crate. In other words, Ulogi was murdered so the killer could steal the stone idol. No, it's not right what you say. The Diablo is in the stone figure. It breaks out from the crate itself, from this crate. Then it kills Senor Archie. Because the Senor, he trespasses in the ancient place. For this, he is punished by the gods. Maybe he shouldn't have been fucking trespassing. Have you considered that? Maybe don't trespass on people's, like, sacred land. That thing was made of stone. It couldn't move on its own, you chump. No. The stone Diablo. It kills the Senor. See, si, Senor Archie. His life is taken by the stone figure. Ugh. There's no talking of some folk, is there? Eek. I was intending to wait until the forensics came back. Wait, until the report came back from forensics, but maybe we'll do things differently. I think it's time to demonstrate that the killer in this case was very definitely human. Over to you, Lucy. I'm just kidding. We're doing one more. <laughs> oh, we're at the conclusion? Okay. The perpetrator of- We can't be. The perpetrator of this crime who killed Archie Lodge stole the stone idol. Could not have been a demon. Not a demon. No, the killer is human, but a human that possesses the heart of a demon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't, I like how, here's the thing. Um, because of Clavier Gavin, I was reading that as Ya, yeah, and for some reason it only now processed right this second because I'm so tired that's laughing. Ha ha ha. Obviously. I know Spanish better than I know German. Like, stupid hours. It's not possible. The, the killer cannot be human. Ha? Huh? In Spanish, a J is pronounced with an H. That's why you hear, you hear, hear Jesus, Josefina. Um, like, the J is pronounced as an H. So this is how you write laughing in Spanish. It's not yes. I- I was reading it as the yes in German. Um, and I don't know why other than, um, I'm feeling out of it and tired. Like, clearly, he's been speaking Spanish the whole time, but my brain just wasn't making that connection because it's so late. It's been a long day. It's making no sense. It's impossible. This senor, he must be killed by the Diablo. It's the only way. The lad's getting more and more worked up, prof. He's cracking. 
They are certainly determined to make us believe that it was the work of a demon. It's not what I want you to believe. It's what you must believe, because it is the truth. The stone figure the Dia with the Diablo inside it breaks out from this wooden box. It kills Senor Archie, and it is dis and it escapes through the window. Even Senor Archie says it's a Diablo. No, he shouts it in the telephone. Aye, that is what Ms. Estate Atista said in her statement as it happens. I think you'll find the cry was the killer impersonating Dr. Ologi. A simple examination of the intercom by the door will make that immediately clear, Lucy, would you? He has sent a calm here, Prof. This is the only way to contact the front desk from within the hut, eh? Yes, and if Dr. Ologi had indeed screamed for help on the intercom, something would be very amiss. Do you know what this is? The Prince of NY Path. This cause fingerprints have been wiped off, isn't it, eh? Oh, Lord G would hardly have wiped off his own prints if he weren't in the middle of being attacked by a demon. And surely no demon would be concerned with wiping his victim's fingerprints away. I... I say nothing. No, it's pretty plain to see. It screamed down the intercom with a killer impersonating Dr. Elodge. Whoever it, were, it was knew he wouldn't be found out on account of the poor sound quality. And that's not all. There's evidence on the scene that, the co that contradicts the possibility that the demon broke out of the crate itself. Do you know what that evidence, what evidence is? If the stone idol broke itself out of the crate it were in, then how come there's three crates with their lids off, eh? Uh, it's... it's because... See, because the force, it is so much. I don't... I don't think so. I think the killer didn't know what was inside each crate. Oh, I was saying it was because he didn't know how to read, but there were three open. Fuck. So until he opened the... This actually does support this. So he opened the crates one by one until he located the stone idol. Maybe, maybe the Diablo is making a person do these things for it. You won't let this Diablo thing go, will you? Demons like this, that of which you speak, do not exist. What do exist are humans with demons in their hearts. Who else has a demonic heart in this case, Lucy? Why don't you enlighten us? Lodge's killer were you, Mr. Careta. Muchacha. It hurt me very much when you say this. If it's true, someone is taking the stone figure. Why do you think it's me? You have some evidence that I am the killer? Certainly we do. Along with three other, uh, with the other pieces of evidence, the three open crates heavily implicated in this crime. Along with that additional evidence, the truth is blindingly obvious. Uh, is it? Let me give you a hint. It has to do with the biscuits that you brought us as a gift, Mr. Kareta. Which, cr uh, which crate contains the stone idol were in plain as day on t on t on t open as day on t open page of this notebook. But despite that, the killer opened three of them before he got into that crate over there with the idol. In. in other words, the killer can't read. New killer lore drops. That, Mr. Coretta, points the finger pretty well straight at you. We found your fingerprints all over the notebook, so we know without question that you saw what was written. But since you can't read, it didn't help you. You were none the wiser as the location of the item. C. 
see. See. It's true. Uh, yeah, that's enough. Just like that. That was a short case. You, Senor Leighton, and you, Muchacha, you were very clever. You admit to the crime? See, si. I kill the Senor. I put the axe in between his eyes. How could you do something that grim? Oh! Because Senor Archie, he said he would take the stone figure away. Even I, I gave, even I give him the special liquor for my people. He didn't listen to what I said. It's then when I, when I don't know what to do, I hear the voice, a voice. See, si, the voice of the Diablo. There we go again. I give you my power. Kill the one who trespassed my temple. It say. So I do what the voice tell me. I leave the door of the hut unlocked. I I leave the door of the hut locked, and I pass through the walls to be there no more. It's the power of the Diablo in me. Give over! You can't pass through walls. That just doesn't happen. See, and the way the dead Senor he moved is the dead di is uh, is the Diablo as well. Big Senor Susasu, Big Senor Sasugasa. He ran away, shaking and screaming like a muchacha. It's very funny. What you describe is impossible. No, it's not possible to explain these things if you don't believe in the dia this Diablo. I is you could have taken the door for timbers and it's the telephone for you. Uh, I'll bet it's forensics. Quickest girl in the West. That or a forensic prof with their report. They've been over that hot door with a fine tooth comb, they say. But there were no way the hinges could have been tampered with, apparently. An adhesive one. I see. Apparently, the owner saw screw were missing a few days earlier, so he drowned the hinges in glue. Mr. Sasukasa has given a statement to that effect now. A few days earlier, one of the screws came out of its hinges, so I smothered the hinges with glue to prevent any more problems with the door. Ah. So, does that mean it can't have been Mr. Careta that done it then? See? So, it's okay if I leave now. I still haven't seen the Buckingham Palace. And I have to buy some gifts for Mariana and everyone in my village. happy to just let him go like that, are you, prof, prof? Don't worry, we'll have a man on him. In any case, we can't detain him until we've solved the mystery. Ah, oh, and we can't pin it on him while he's going on about his demon doing it here. No, we've got to get to the bottom of this one. anti wreck book Shit. Um... Unfortunately, all the bad books. I've read I can't anti wreck because they were for work. Let me see, let me see, let me show. I am going to go with Relic, which I might have anti-wrecked before, and I'm going to make a long video about it at some point, but Hannah experienced this book when I was reading it because I had a breakdown about the geography. But it does contain some incredible lines about how um, this group of people, it's a, it's a dystopian. This group of people believe that the downfall of society included a MasterCard, Tylenol, and Apple. Incredible, impeccable, no notes, no notes. Absolutely absurd though, and has indigenous characters treated in a very questionable way. So um, aside with just, um, being bad like it's a bad book no this is the one hannah this is the one with the with the inuit characters where we were trying to figure out where the fuck they ended up because she was like i got on a when like the characters talked about like getting on a 
boat and like going up into the sea, but then they would have, they should have hit like Norway. You, you and Nikki tried to help me figure out the geography of this one. It was a few years ago now, like literally a year or two ago, I think. Um, it was very, it sent me in a spiral. I, I listened to it and then I got the ebook because I was so con confused and I needed words written down. And then I bought both the first and the second book. Yes, JFK, I've been working on a selection video script for, um, several months now. I've listened to the books twice and I'm on a read of the books where I am annotating, taking notes, and uh, tabbing constantly. And then I will be formulating all those thoughts into a uh, 10,000 word essay. Maybe, maybe more. And then I will be making a video. But, um, no. And this is, the old, this is like the third time I'm reading this election in the past year. Like, I've read it multiple times before. But yes, Booktuber, it's, at least that video is gonna happen, because I have to make it happen. Anyway. Yes, there are two remaining points that we can't explain. How Caretta managed to disappear from a locked room, and how, as we've been led to believe, the corpse came back to life. So it's back to the crime scene, Lucy, until we find some answers. I think if I can save, if I can figure out how that works. Um, does this game save automatically? So where do we start? Someone answer while I finish this moment, I guess. Okay, no. Saving. It just saved. Just kidding. It just saved. So, we're gonna be done because I have to get up in the morning and I didn't sleep last night. Um... This guy has the skinniest legs of all time. Look at these. No muscles. It's good fucking bird legs. Um This is a stick figure of a man. Just bone. Just bone. Um on Thursday, I'll be playing a new Nancy Drew game. I don't know how it will go. And on Friday, Ronnie and I are going to be playing something, but probably not Ace Attorney. I don't know what we're going to be playing. I don't know. But, um, yep, that's all I got. And we'll be here next Monday for more of this questionable case. There's always got to be one, right? <laughs> in a video game with cases, there has to be at least one where you're like, oh... Oh no. Oh, we could have done without this one. Mmm. Mmm. You know? So, yeah. 2013. That's still too late. That's too late, guys. That's too late. But yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'm very sleepy. I'm gonna eat a little bit of ice cream so I can feel something and then go to bed. So, um, have a good day. Have a good night. Um, drink some water. And I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.